Hey friends, welcome back. Now let's explore another trick which might be helpful for your projects if you have the structure I'm going to show you right now. So we all know that if you have multiple files in a folder, you can extract those files using this files from folder option if they have the same shape. Then we do not have any problems, right? But what if we have the following use case? We have a folder structure in here and I created this. You can download it from the resource section, which looks like that. I have here multiple folders. And inside this multiple folders, let me just double click here, I have now three folders, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So this time we have multiple files. If I go in one of these folders, you see that there is Q1, Q2, and Q3, Q4 for the year 2021. And the same is true for the other years. So for instance, in 2023, if I double click here, again, I have Q1, Q2, and here Q3, Q4. So that is the structure of what the data looks like. And if I open this, let me just double click here. This is what the data looks like. Okay. It's just a simple example file. Of course, your files could be, uh, could contain much more data, but as long as the structure is the same, uh, this will work this trick. Okay. So the important fact here is that this time all the columns are the same, right? So it's the same structure for all the different kinds of files we have. The main challenge is that this time we do not have all the files in one folder, but the files are separated by multiple folders. So the question is, how can we load all this data into Power BI? Um, to And of course, we want to be efficient, right? So we don't want to go from, fo uh, from folder three times, anything like that. So how do we do this? Okay, so let's just close this here and let's go back. Okay, and open Power BI. Here we go. And now let's explore that. So at first, we can go to get data here. And I want to get the data from a folder so I can go to more. And then let's just wait until the window appears. There it is. And I'm choosing the folder. Click on folder here. Click on connect. And then we need the folder path. So let me go to my folder here and choose, in this case, let's start with 2021. Go in here. Control C to copy this. And let's go back to Power BI and Control V to paste it. So nothing new here. We just extract the data from the folder. Click OK. And uh, here it is. Now it shows us the binary files and this would mean we could combine the files and so on. But we instead would want to go to transform data. So click on transform data and open the query editor. Here we go. And we see that we got the folder path here and some additional information like when was the file created and so on. And also important to us here is this binary because the binary file content contains the underlying Excel file. We see that if we click next to the binary because then at the bottom, as you can see here, uh, the file appears. Okay, so first we need to extract actually the content from the binary. So to do this, we could use the excel.workbook function. We already know this, but here, well, let me show this to you again. This is the formula you need, right? Excel.workbook and then referring the content column here. So let's do that. Let's actually, um, let me go in here and say, I want to go up here and add a column. Click on, in this case, custom column, and then let's create it. Here's the custom column. And let's actually use the Excel. Let me just paste it here. Okay, Excel, Excel dot workbook. So there it is the function. Click on it and then open parenthesis here. And now we need to put in the contents. We can either manually type it in or we could click on here and insert or we can double click here. All works. And then we need to close the parenthesis here. So no syntax errors. So far so good. Click on OK. And here is our table column. And because the other information is in this case right now not relevant to us, I can simply right click here and say I want to remove other columns. So this is our table. If you click next to it, you see that this actually contains the information for the table. So let's actually go in here and expand this. Uncheck this box. We don't need this. Click OK. And now we got the two different tables here. And if you click next to the table, we see that that's what the data looks like. Now. Because this was not converted into a table up front, we see that currently it contains column one, column two, and column three. So if this is already, uh, if the year product and revenue, or in case you have different data and your data is already the column headers, then you can avoid the next step. Otherwise, if the data looks like that to you, then you need to follow one additional step, which is promoting the headers. So let's do that because in our case, I want to first have the year product and revenue as the column headers. So let's do that. Let's go under add column and add another custom column. 
and say we want to promote the headers. So let's call this, uh, in this case, table dot promote headers, promote headers. There it is, the function. And I don't need to have it twice. Let's get up that. So, okay, table of promote headers. And then I put in here the data column, which contains our table. So double click here and close this, right? And just to show this to you, let me just copy this and let me just paste it in here. Uh, oh, there it already is, table of promote headers. That's what we do in here, the second command. Okay. All right, so let's close this and then let's actually click OK. And we see that we got another table in here, but this time if you click on table, you see that the headers are promoted. And this is true for both of the columns. And that's what I want because this means that when we combine those two tables, because they have the same column, the column header does not appear a second time below the, the first table, okay? That's why we do it. So then again, we can right click here and say we want to remove the other columns because this is the only column we need. And then let's click the two arrows here and say we want to click okay, extract the data. And now we see we got all the, in this case, six columns, uh, six rows, sorry, we have in the two files in Excel, right? So we see we got all the data for 2021. So all the data which is included in this specific folder here. If I go multiple folders here one more time, that's it, right? 2021, two files. So Q1, Q2, and Q3, Q4, and we have all the data extracted. All right, so this means we have now the 2021 data. But how can we now get also the 2022 data and 2023 data? Well, of course we could uh, do this three times and then we can use the append in uh, Power Query Editor to have all in one big table. But that's not what I want. I wanna be a little bit more efficient. So to do this, we convert this transformation steps we have done here into a function. Because if we convert it into a function, we can reapply it. So let's do that. Let's actually go inside our table here and inside to be specific more into the advanced editor into our code. And there, I want to actually add something here. At the top, I'd like to add a, a variable, which means we simply put in a open parenthesis, and then we specify the name, for instance, the file path. Okay, I name it file path, and it is a text, so I say as text, and then I'm using an equal sign and a, a, gr a greater symbol, or smaller symbol, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. So, and this actually, that's what I put in front, and then I'm gonna replace what's in here. So actually everything in here, uh, I get rid of it. So let me just cut that, cut that out. And here instead of putting the file path. So that's the transformation. And uh, that's basically all we need to do to convert this into a function. Because the file path here is something we can give into this transformation step, so into this function. And then everything is done on the file path. So hopefully you can see that. It's just really a parenthesis and then file path or the name you want to give it as text, closing parenthesis, and then an equal and the arrow. So if I click on done now, you'll see that now this converts into a function. So we don't see the data anymore because now it's, it's really a function itself, which has one parameter, which is file path. So of course we can rename it as um, simply um, path or whatever we want to give this function. Let's say, um, uh, multiple folder extraction, okay? Extraction, like that, okay. So that's our function, and um, you see that we have renamed it here. Um, I would encourage you to give it a proper name. And now, what we need is, we need to have simply uh, a table which contains all the file paths we want to extract. So to do this, we could either create it in Excel, that would be one option, or we could do it manually in here. Now, because I only have three file paths, I can, can do it here as well. So let's click on enter data. And there's our table. And let's call this table simply paths. Okay, let's call it path. Path. And then we need to put in here the path structure itself. So if I go to my folder here and I double click here, let's double click here. I copy this one, control C to copy it. And I simply paste it in here. So let's give this a name. Let's call this uh, the F paths, okay, simply for five paths. Okay, and now I paste this inside, that's the first one, and I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see that. I simply copy the file path in here, that's all, uh, for 2021. And I do the same for 2022, so I go in here, double click, let's say here, Control C, Control V to paste it, okay, like that, 
And of course I can paste it a, a third time and then just double click in here and just rename it here as well. So this is 2023 to be exact, okay? So this means we got all of them and uh, I don't need the full form. So this one should be deleted. Okay, here we go. So let's click on okay. And you see that there is now simply a table with our three file paths. And what we can do now is simply invoke the function. So we can create another add column here, then uh, in this case invoke custom function. So let's do that. Now the column name could be anything, in this case it's custom, and uh, here the function query. Well, I want to use the multiple folder extraction, which we created. And what is actually the path or the column I want to apply this on? In this case, we only have one column, that's why it's pre-selected. If you have multiple columns in the table, then choose the specific column you want to apply it to. So let's do that for the file path. And this now means that each of the file paths is put as the parameter inside this multiple folder extraction and as, as the file path here, as this variable. And then all the applied steps, which we've done before, is applied to the specific folder. And because the structure is the same, that's why I said at the beginning, this is important, right? But the structure is the same, we can apply all the steps to all the files in exactly the same way. So if I click OK now, we got three tables. So the first one for 2021, 2022, and 2023. And now if we just go here and ex expand this, so let's actually use all the columns, click OK. And now we see we got the year here, which is 2021, 2022, and 2023. And we got all the products in here, and we also got all the revenue here from the sales call, okay? And now, of course, we could uh, also change the data type, which you should do. Um, the file path, you could include it or not, it's up to you. I mean, I could go here and say, I want to remove this. And we can say, okay, year, for instance, this could be a whole number here, product is a text. Let's do that here, this is a text, and the revenue here is, in this case, uh, should be, uh, either it's a fixed decimal number, because actually it's a, let's do that, because it's a uh, revenue. And then, of course, if you go to home, click on close and apply, and uh, take a look at your report. Now you have all the data in the report from all the different kinds of folders, right? And now, of course, you could say, okay, uh, show me the year and uh, show me the revenue uh, for each of the products, right? So this could be now analyzed in Power BI the way you want it, but the main um, goal is now uh, was successfully achieved, which is simply extracting here data from multiple folders. So you see that you can also do this applying a function, which is a little bit more efficient, of course, instead of doing this manually, especially if you have a lot of folders in here, okay? So that's it for this trick. Hopefully that was helpful and can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.